background. So I'm an optometrist and I, I look at it with my eye lens on. And um, I did a lot of research around this topic on um, especially blue light and how it affects the eye structures and circadian rhythms. Um, so yeah, yeah then let's touch on that. Why don't we touch on why and how blue light affects the eyes and sleep, I guess. Um, so yeah. screens, we are now using them more than ever. Um, I think the pandemic fueled it, right? You know, we were even working on our screens and then, you know, leisure was on our screens as well. So our total screen time, I don't know about you now is 12 hours, north of 12 hours onwards, right? Um, both for those two reasons. And um, yeah, when it comes to our eyes, we have a visual system which allows us to see, allows us to get on throughout the day. And um, the way I like to talk about it is um, we, we have muscles in our eyes, just the same way um, when we go to the gym, we have muscles on our body. You know, no one can sit there and do more than, te- you know, 15, 20 reps and keep going for, you know, an hour or whatever, right? You have to stop at some point. Right. In the same way, our eyes have a visual system which um, allow us to focus and accommodate on things we're doing. Now, we, we unfortunately don't really feel that pain until the pain happens a little bit later. So in, when it comes to the eyes, it's visual fatigue, eye strain, tired eyes and headaches. But you only feel the symptoms after, let's say, one to two hours once the visual system has, you know, kind of fallen apart in one way because it's quite resilient and it can keep going. But, you know, it kind of gets to a point where you feel those symptoms. And that's why, you know, you know, myself included, and a lot of people that are professionals that work on screens, they start feeling that, you know, tired eyes after a couple of hours on screens. And they're like, oh God, I need to go and yeah. do something else. I need to go, I need to go open the fridge or I need to, you know, look elsewhere yeah. because you're just getting that um, fatigue in the eyes. And um, mm-hmm. secondly is the sleep aspect. Um, you know, h- how many of us scroll on TikTok in the evenings or on Instagram now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the attacks. most guilty attack attack <laughs> yeah it's it, it's a lot of us right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. it's made your life better and worse yes. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's great just, to just pick it up and be like oh there. Th- there are and it's good you know like oh I don't, I don't have anything to do let me jump on tiktok let me see what's happening um i mean when i jump on there's just a lot of twerking happening um but i think the algorithm has now changed <laughs> that's your so algorithm's I've... fault though yeah. like you're, exactly. you're it's, cha- al- it's changed now the algorithm knows what yeah yeah yeah, yeah. What, what 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 you like right and it's changed now because i've kind of like first i realized i was like what's happening because when you log into it when i st- first start using like whoa this i thought this was a social network <laughs> it's updated now so i get a lot more pg stuff um but yeah it's it's one of those things now where we're using screens in the evening for entertainment as well and um what happens is we should be putting away artificial light as well as natural sunlight in the evening and that happens naturally when the sun sets but what we're doing is we're we're replicating the sun in the palm of our hands because we're saying right now we have a source of blue light in our hands which are replicating the sun and it suppresses a hormone called melatonin So melatonin is the hormone which tells your body now is the time to go to bed. And also, you know, you need to have high levels of melatonin in your body because um, it it also showcases the the quality of sleep you're going to have. So, for example, you'll be getting into bed. Let's say you've been on TikTok, you've used screens, you'll have... um, you have a low concentration of melatonin in the body. So what you're going to do is you're going to toss and turn because you can't get to sleep. And then eventually you might get to sleep. And then when you are asleep, you'll have a poor rested sleep because what happens is the melatonin levels are so low that your body is still on. So there's areas like your skin um, that's still responding to light around you or noises because your body's still on. When melatonin levels are high, what happens is, you know, your body can shut off and it's not responding outwards. So you can get muscle recovery. You can get the brain's cleansing itself of toxins, for example, and that's all mm. happening. But without that, you, you struggle because of those uh, low level of melatonin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you get so fascinated with all of this? Like, let's go back to the beginning and, you know, how you grew up and then your journey into medical school. And where did this all start? So, yeah, I, I was studying optometry here in London City University. And um, I was working on the weekends at a uh, optician chain uh it's called vision express here but it's grand vision in in america um 
And um, yeah, I was working there to get some industry experience and also fund my university studies. And back in 2014, um, the store, the lead optometrist, she gathered the team and said, hey, we've got this new product for people that wear glasses. And she said, it's something called blue control. It's a coating that goes onto your lens. And if you have this on your glasses, you're going to be able to um, use screens for longer. You're not going to get tired eyes. And I was really naturally intrigued because my mother's always told me growing up that screens are bad for your eyes, right? But she didn't have a reason for it. She just like stay, sit forever from the TV, et cetera. And I thought, is this the missing piece? It's going to burn your eyes out. A mother's yeah, she... intuition is yeah. always right. Yeah. Mother's always right. Totally. Something. They, they know best, right? They know best. And, is she um, ever like, I, I never told questioned you so? <laughs> <laughs> she, she actually hasn't, which is, which is quite interesting. <laughs> But um, yeah, you, you know, you. So now I was like, oh, is is this the reason why? So I ran back to the university the following week, and I demanded from the faculty and lecturers. I said, I, I want to do a research project on this topic because I'm fascinated by um, what what I've just learned. So I ended up doing a research project over twelve months, which looked at how blue light affects the eyes, physiology, and circadian rhythms. And after I did that, I found there was lots of clinical research papers which showed yes, blue light from screens and artificial light was causing visual stress, but it was also suppressing melatonin. So at that point, I was like, wow, these are massive pain points, both eyes and sleep, and screens are only going to get bigger and brighter. And I said, well, selfishly, I want to create a product that I can use to limit the blue light exposure. And if I need it, other people are going to need it as well, right? I was just like, you know, it, it must be yeah. the case. So I kind of went gung-ho, and I was like, right, I need to, I want to figure out something that, myself and other people can use to limit their exposure to screen time. What is blue light? Because we keep saying blue light, blue light. But yeah, what is blue light? light is it? Yeah, definitely. So blue light is a type of light that sits within the visible spectrum of light. So taking it back to kind of our um, college days of, of science, they teach you, you've got UV light on the left-hand side, which is zero to 400 nanometers. And then you've got visible light, which is 400 nanometers, about 800 nanometers. And then after that, you've got x-ray and microwave uh, waves of light. Now, blue light sits in the visible spectrum of light for 400 to 500 nanometers. So as soon as you get past the UV light, it immediately goes to blue light. So that's the first color that comes um, from the visible spectrum of light and actually it has a shorter wavelength. So what that means is less of it is required to cause an effect on us as humans. Now, there isn't a magic cutoff so when we're talking about it, when we're looking at a diagram or in science, it seems there is, but actually, you know, there's UV light and blue light. Blue light are very closely related and actually you can have elements of both in each other. So, you know, generally when we're talking about blue light, it's 380 nanometers up to 500 nanometers. And that 380 to 450 nanometers, the blue light that affects the eyes and 450 to 500 is the blue light that affects our sleep. Interesting. So what, what are like the main sources of blue light that we're exposed yeah. to? <laughs> so the sun is one of the biggest. So the sun emits a uh, natural UV and blue light. Then you've got um, LED lighting around us. So a lot of light bulbs that we use, we all change to LED because obviously they're a little bit more sustainable. You can get more life out of them. But a lot of them are just bright white light. You know, it's a, that there's a temperature scale called Kelvins and you'll find 5,000 Kelvins is like white daylight. And a lot of us use them in our home. So if you, you, you might have them in the bathroom, but some people have this type of lighting in their bathroom. So when they need to, when they wake up to go to the bathroom, they're like, well, I might not be able to get back to sleep because they've just been hit by, you know, white lighting, which has lots of blue light. Um, so yeah, lighting is another thing. And then secondly, uh, thirdly, you've got screens. So TVs, monitors, laptops, smartphones, and tablets. It's crazy because um, I was just listening to another podcast and something that they brought up, which I thought was really interesting was, you know, eyes are, you know, the lens to the brain. And so mm. many of us are, we wake up and then the first thing we do is we get in our car and we go to work and we're in these situations where we're being, you know, blue light, blue light, blue light, mm. every screen or charting, we're, you know, in front of screens for entertainment, all these things. And what I think we're not really tapping into and i would love to hear your thoughts on this is like how much it's could be affected this light by can be affecting our anxiety depression like you know eyes are the direct access to our brains like what are your thoughts on this 
Yeah, it's it, it's really interesting, and I just want to share a statistic with you. So, we have um, eleven mil- million neurons in our body, and a ten million of them are in our eyes. And actually, research has found that at any given moment, your brain is spending half of its capacity deciphering visual stimuli. So that means every second, fifty percent of your brain is working to decipher what you're seeing. So, if you suffer from anything visually or anything visually is affecting you your you know cognitive function your ability to do other things is going to be impaired and it's not going to be as good as it can be if you were looking after your eyes so when i learned that i was like wow that, that that's pretty incredible that you know your eyes have so much connection to your brain and your brain is, is having to work to decide all that information mm-hmm. what about even so we're mature but like kids and as their eyes are still developing too but when we were little we didn't have ipads and things like we had tv but we still yeah no cell phones no ipads tablets we watched tv a little bit when we were little but i don't feel like we had the exposure that kids nowadays do Mm. to screens right yeah and and it's there's there's lots of um yeah there's you know so with kids the lens in their eye so this is where usually adults get cataracts right so we have a lens in the eye which sits behind the cornea and this doesn't develop fully until your teenage years. So children are actually twice as susceptible to UV and blue light damage, which is massive. And now you, now we're seeing kids are given iPads to learn. So they're, they're learning from iPads and then they're on their phone for, you know, engaging with their friends or, or again, social media. So, yeah, you know, children, unfortunately, are getting the brunt of this. And, you know, there's not when it comes to research, Devices are only one or two decades old. You've got to think about this as well. And um, yeah. not a lot of people mm-hmm. are putting money behind researching um, how screens are going to affect children in the long term. But it's, it's really hard to um, create an independent factor to say, right, we're going to follow 500 kids around for 10 years and see what happens mm-hmm. and just make sure that they keep carrying on using that screen time the same amount every day. It's really hard to do that. Um and also find people that are willing to fund studies like that. But what we are Mm -hmm. seeing, there's some short cohort studies which have shown that um, now post the pandemic, we've seen that actually children that spend time on screens are 30% more likely to be short-sighted. So they're gonna need glasses. Um, Those that spend more than three hours on screens Mm -hmm. daily. That's really interesting. I mean, along those lines, I don't know if this is something that is being researched, but how much time is too much time on a screen? Like, is there, is there like a rule of thumb that, you know, in research, like what are the, what, what's it telling us? Yeah. So generally, um, what, what I usually say, what I've kind of taken from different research studies is generally, um, anyone that's under 25 can go, um, two hours using screens and, you know, be able to accommodate and have their natural visual system um, deal with that. But generally in a day to day, you shouldn't be doing it any more than four hours. And that's if you want to spend, spend one hour here, one hour there, but you should not spend more than four hours a day on screens as for kids. You know, it just shouldn't. That's what the research is saying was that either going to suffer from short sightedness or they're going to suffer from all the blue light impacts because again, they're getting twice as much as human, uh, sorry, adults, not humans. Um, so they're really more susceptible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kids are humans after all. I mean, some, some, some parents might say they're aliens, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what about adults? Yeah. What about adults? <laughs> so I can feel oh, bad there. about myself. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> no, I'm going to maybe make a positive change gonna help me yeah like is there you know i mean a lot of us who work in situations like we're literally on screens all day i mean what are your thoughts on that yeah i think it it look it's the 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 digital age we're in now right we can't avoid them but there's some simple things that we can be doing to really um, mitigate some of the risk right and uh two key things stand out for me is when you're when you're having to use screens um brightness is really important so you can do something simple as turning down your brightness a few notches because what that does it reduces the intensity of the light right secondly is proximity i always say when using screens is keep them at arm's distance away 
And what that does, again, it reduces the intensity of the source of the light, so you're not going to be as impacted. If you can follow those two things when using screens, you're actually going to be a lot better off than if you weren't regulating um, the distance and the brightness because um, they help. So I, I suggest that to anyone when they're doing it. And, you know, in evenings, I'd say, do put your phones away two hours before bed. And also when you wake up, get a, get a normal alarm clock. Do not use your phone um, because we all have a tendency to jump on up, you know, turn off the alarm and then you're kind of like you're on your phone. Right. And we go into an alpha. We're in an alpha state when we wake up for at least 20 minutes to one hour. And that's when the mind is so susceptible to um, being influenced. So if you're on social media and you're scrolling through things, it's nine times out of 10 probably going to influence you negatively. But if you can keep that one hour space or things that are positive, it's going to change your day. So I always say, try not to pick up phones in the first hour of the day. And then when you're going to bed, keep them away for at least two hours um, and it will change your life. I really want to try because right now, like I just switched into a med device sales job this year from 10 years of like actual nursing in a hospital. And I wake up to like 900 emails. So like my alarm goes off and I look uh, at my phone and there's like 10 emails and I'm like, okay, let me start like my work day because I don't have an office. I'm like, and I check all my emails before I even like get out of bed and use the bathroom. Yeah. You need, def I, I would definitely recommend you to change that and set, set yourself some boundaries as well. Like, you know, you need to, if you're going to jump on your phone, be able to set, you know, now there's so many cool software out there where you can stop email notifications coming up and only allow them to come up for a certain hour. So you can still use your phone if you really wanted to. Um, but as, if you wake up and you've got emails coming on, I don't, if that, if that was me, I just get loads of anxiety because I'm like, boom, I'm switched on. And then you're like, you just go into work mode and you have you have no time to think about yourself or what you're going to have for breakfast or, you know, your partner Except or the day whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exa exactly. Yeah. You almost get sidetracked. You might have had a plan to say, right, I'm going to go in today. I've got three key projects I need to take care of. But then you answer your emails and then you're like, right, now my, my, my focus has changed completely because someone's asking for this or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, it's insane. It's definitely an area I need to... We all, we can all improve in that area. Um, I'm really curious uh, about this. So I feel like, um, and I don't get them personally, but is there any um, research or understanding in terms of like light sensitivity? Because I feel like personally for me, I'm very light sensitive. Like when I come home, um, there is a rule in our house. We do not, I don't use overhead lights. Like even just physical, like, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like overhead lights. So for us, you know, we have red lights in, in our bedroom now. I took out all the white light. Um, and, you know, it, my head goes to like also light sensitivity in terms of migraines. Mm -hmm. Is there research into this? Like are, are certain people more sensitive to certain lights? Because I feel like I am personally, but I just don't know. Is that like research based? You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And everyone's eyes are unique, so they all affect us in different ways. But um, generally, those that are lighter skin, they have less melanin in their eyes. So they're actually more susceptible to UV or blue light damage. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be more sensitive generally to suffering from those, um, let's say, visual migraines or sensitivities because you don't have that melanin in the eye, which actually acts as a natural protection for you know, aberrations. Aberrations are light that's entering your eye, which are which is not coming at the right angle, for example. So again, your visual system has to decipher it. But when you have um, mm -hmm. less melanin, it becomes harder. So your visual system is having to work harder and therefore you suffer from light sensitivity. Um, so yeah, that, that that's definitely one thing. And um, other people also definitely as we get older in the lens, in the eye, that becomes thicker. And what can happen is you can start suffering from glare. So you know, we, we might have parents which are complaining about driving at the night. Um, you know, you start seeing that a lot more right. because they, they, they develop cataracts in the eye and it just pushes the glare in the eye so much more. Um, and that's usually the cause for them. So we've talked how problematic blue light is and how awful our exposure is. And you did all this research. Yeah. I can't talk. <laughs> research. And you're like, all right. I, I can help. I can do I something can do about this yeah, problem. Yeah, like yeah. what, tell us about your, your company, what you've done. Yeah. Ever, give us the, the whole back. Where did it start? We want to know. 
so yeah, carrying on from uh, when I was working in that optician, I did that study. Um, I was quite fortunate enough that when I did that study, the same sister university that I went to, Cass Business School, they had a competition for people that had business ideas. And it was like, hey, enter this competition and you can win 10,000 pounds over two stages. And I was like, all right, well, I've got this idea. Let me enter. And um, yeah, I entered into stage one. The brand was actually at that time called I Sleep Easy with Two Eyes. It was a really amateur name. Now looking back at it, um, <laughs> but cute. I quickly, you know, I quickly created a, yeah, a little brand, a graphics and said, this is what I want to do. Um, I went to this stage one, which was just kind of getting all your friends and family to vote. And I just had a lecture before that event and I got all my 130 peers to come and they all voted for me. So I kind of rigged that. So, you know, <laughs> that, that worked in my favor, but I, I won that stage, cute. which was great. Strategy. And then, um, I like it. Yeah, you got you got to use you got to be able to utilize what you have around you, right? And uh, in, get your friends to support you. So yeah, um, and then the second stage was six months later, where we actually had to develop a prototype and work on creating, um, you know, something a little bit more than just an idea. So in that six months, I set about creating a, a specification for the product. You know, what does our material and technology need to have in it to filter out blue light, but not change the colors on your screen? So you and I can keep using our devices without seeing like a orange or red colored screen, for example, and remove as much blue light mm -hmm. as possible. So I worked hard in that six months to create a prototype, which I did. And then I had to pitch in front of, or well, pitch to 50 like tech entrepreneurs in the UK. And um, there was 10 businesses there. And um, I remember speaking to about 10 judges out of the 50. And I was the only person on my team. Other teams had about four people. And I did the maths and I said, I've only spoken to 10 people. I don't think I'm going to win. Was it all the other teams have spoken to like all the judges? Was they all had badges on their, on their um, shirt? And um, yeah, I just was very pessimistic. I thought, oh, I'm not going to win this. But somehow when they, when they came to announce the winners, they were like, Drubin Patel. And um, I sleep easy. I was like, wow. I was like, I won. <laughs> like, and I had this big like 10,000 pounds mm. fake check. Um, and I was like, right, I can start doing like stuff the, like now. big, like <laughs> the big one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the picture. Yeah. Like the big, yeah. With the, I always with the, wanted one of those. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've still got it. It's like rolled up and I was just cool. like, it does so much. And I, I was so happy that day I went home and I showed my, my mom and dad. I was like, wow, look, I won this thing. And you know, it was chuff. And then, um, I would hang yeah. in my office. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, after I won that, you know, had a little bit of funding and start, you know, put my head down and start to create the products. And um, after another 18 months, what I'd done is everyone I spoke to, I told them about what I was doing and I managed to get about 2000 emails. And then when I was ready to launch, I just sent everyone an email and I had, I got about a thousand pre-orders of our first line of products back in 2015. And I was like, well, people actually either really like me or they want the products. Um, I thought it was the, the latter, probably, probably not the first, um, was that's a lot of people to like you, but there you go. Um, and I, I started the business while I was still in university in my third year. So I still had to complete that year. I still had to complete a pre-registration, which is where you have to qualify and do tests. And then I was working for another year as an optometrist full time. So in those three years, I was working evenings and nights on the business. You know, I had product in my home, um, and once I was able to get away from my profession, because you're tied into your employer at the time, because they pay for exams, etc. I was like, right, this business has grown to, you know, we're doing six figures and I'm just doing it evenings and lunches. Um, I need to spend more time on this because as an optometrist, you test about 15 patients eyes in a day. And I thought, actually, I can impact a lot more people here if I can provide official products and do it to hundreds of people there's a lot more you know service i can provide so i said you know what i'm gonna go into this full time and um, that's what i did and i was fortunate enough to meet one of my business partners who also invested in the business at that point where we worked on re you know rebranding to oki shield um, creating a full product set so not only did we uh, then start doing screen filters for tablets laptops and monitors we bought out blue laptop and glasses and also an eye friendly desk lamp and um, yeah, we just we just started working and building a team and building the business out. And you know what we did over time was we we also established a presence in the USA. So we have 
a fulfillment center in Pennsylvania. We also sell to Best Buy, Verizon and Nordstrom in the USA, which are amazing retailers. Um, and yeah, it's just grown up organically. But so many people now care about their eyes and screen time. So um, yeah, it's been it's been an incredible journey. If you had to recommend just like one of products well let's go people. through your yeah, products like, what are the products? Yeah, i'm like yeah. totally on the website right now like i need this she's, I need she's, this. she's <laughs> from, we're looking we're, <laughs> we're in the process of shopping i like the parker glasses <laughs> those would look good on my face yeah. shape <laughs> yeah, yeah so we've we've got i guess four main character uh, categories i mean we've just recently launched some new products as well but i'll tell you about them after these four key categories so we've got tempered glass screen protectors with the anti-blue light technology with as well as antibacterial technology so they're for your iphones and tablets and they're great because again when you're having that late night tiktok scroll you're not going to really be having your glasses on in bed if you're you know kind of head on the pillow etc so they, they work great because they, they protect you all the time and if you don't have your glasses then again they're keeping you protected um the second set of products is filters for laptops and monitors now they actually are combined with a privacy filter so if you're someone like me who works in cafes or trains and you don't want someone looking at your screen um then it stops people you know peeping on your screen and we actually did that because we were selling a lot to employers so a lot of organizations wanted our products but they said hey because we do financial information we've got to have this feature as well so we went out and did some research and development and combined the two um and it also has anti-glare in it as well because um you know if you like to work in the sun it also blocks out any glare so you can work on your macbook or laptop outside which is great i was just gonna ask you about this because i was talking to my friend and they have like this big like they live in like a high-rise kind of that overlooks like outside so they have this nice patio and they're saying they work from home but they like go on the patio to do a lot of their work and then he mentioned, he's like, oh, I have like a blue light filter so that I can like see out here in the sun. I'm like, does that really work? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I knew of blue light because of nursing and Tori's always been a fan of blue light glasses and all of that. And I always, I work from home sometimes and I have like a rooftop pool. <laughs> and my whole thing <laughs> is I like to go up there because there's Wi-Fi and do my emails. And because I just, when I work outside in the sun, I feel a million times better than being inside my house but I can never see. So I always like put a towel over my head so I can like see my laptop so I can at least be outside. But I'm like, I can't see my screen to like send my emails and stuff. Well, maybe we have a solution. No, but I'm like, does that, does that actually, I, this just happened, this conversation just happened this week too. So, funny. so I was like, what, I've been missing out on this my whole life. There, there you go. So yeah, you need an official for your laptop and monitors and yeah, it'll definitely help you out so you can work and you, you don't need to put a towel over your head. <laughs> But that, that that's a, no, that's, that's a great way do. if you I don't look like such a weirdo <laughs> yeah def definitely people are like what oh what's God, she yeah, doing on there <laughs> um no, literally because i'm like okay i want to get okay to victoria <laughs> but i'm like i want to be out in the sun but yeah i can't actually get real work done yeah. so i'm like let me just throw this towel love this okay this well, is awesome so you have these well, and then what else do you have yeah yeah so th then we have our blue light blocking glasses um you know different styles and colors those are great for anyone that you know watches a lot of tv cinema or whatever else or even working at a desk because some people have multiple screens um so like a lot of our customers choose between the different products they sometimes they like to have the hockey short on their iphone but for their monitors they might prefer to wear glasses because they have it at their desk and they keep the glasses there um so those are um, our glasses products and then we have our ocu lamp which is our all day all night lamp so it's low blue light emissions it's flicker free um and it allows you to control the color temperature the intensity of the light so you can really choose how you want the light to look in the environment um and talking about light my, it's really my, slick uh, looking we're looking at it right now like it looks really nice yeah I like it's that. very um i didn't anticipate that like when i think lamp you know but this is really nice yeah, no, we, we designed it to allow people to be like, you know, what, I actually want to put a very functional but sexy lamp in their home or whatever. And it's portable. You can fold it and it's got 20 That's hours of charge. Sick. So if you mm -hmm. if you take it oh, to your office, you can oh, take nice. it home, etc. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that, that's our Oki lamp. And recently we've also launched two new products. Um, one is a um, eye mask 
and well, a bamboo weighted eye sleep mask. So it's quite, it does two things. It blocks out 100% light, but it also has an inner bag, which you can put in the microwave and then heat up. So a lot of people suffer from dry eyes and you need to then oh. do some lid massage. So once you put the, the hot, well, the eye mask on with the, the inner bag that's warm, mm. what happens is it warms up the glands around the eyes and then you can massage the eyes and it, it secretes the oils onto your um, cornea, which helps with dry eye. And at the same time, you can put the inner bag in the freezer and if you've got puffy, inflamed mm. eyes, you can put cold treatment on and it helps with puffy and grey eyes as well. Um, so that's um, our eye sleep mask. And then we oh my also God. Got... Everybody who works night shift. <laughs> I was just going to say, like... <laughs> like... We we done ten years of of, I've done 10 years of night shift and I'm like this, this is amazing. and then blocking out the light. <laughs> oh, I feel like this would be so yeah. good for sleeping. I love it. I love it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And then what's your um, other product? You did, you did the weighted sleep mask and then, and then yeah. yeah, the la last product we've just released is, um, is our EMF anti-radiation insert. Um, so actually we've, just launched a product which sits between your case and phone and what it does it absorbs emf radiation because if you didn't know um when you see stand two feet away from a microwave it emits about um 150 microwatts of radiation but when you've got a cell phone that's connected to uh, a call it emits 3000 microwatts of radiation and these mm. this type of radiation has been uh, shown to affect our skin and cell tissues it affects our brain signal. So when we're trying to fall asleep, it makes it harder to fall asleep. And also for men, it affects sperm motility. So if you're, um, if you're trying to have a baby, it's going to affect also um, that as well. So what this product does, it absorbs 80% of the radiation without affecting your cell signal. Um, because a lot of products on the market at the moment do block out the radiation, but they also affect your signal. So you can't actually mm -hmm. call people or do anything. You know what's so interesting? Okay, it's so interesting you say this because I feel like EMF radiation I, has always kind of been pushed off as like kooky thought, right? Or like it's, we're being dramatic. We're being dramatic, yeah. right? It's like you, um, you know, it's just something that we don't do. And recently, um, you know, I tend to kind of buy into a lot more of the, not biohacking, but I really am interested in a lot of the things that are kind of going on with um, trying to, bring things back or come away from so much technology. And one of the suggestions that they made, someone made was to not have your phone in your room because of the EMF radiation. And I, this is like such a great little tool. It's interesting too, because someone kind of mentioned this as well. Like, you know, when you're sleeping, if you, if you have your device next to you, there's just like this little, I don't know how to explain it. Like feeling that you might have, versus if it wasn't in your room you feel mm. just a little bit better i don't know how to explain it it's just like this is coming from the girl who has a tv in her room so yeah i know i know and i need to get rid of the tv in the room for sure like I, absolutely i don't I have a tv in my room but, yeah. I, I knock her i'm like you have the red lights you do we this have, and that but you still our, have a tv in your yeah, room i, I know it's like the one thing i can't but is it like i don't know emf like is there can you break it down for us a little bit more or just speak to this because i'm really curious like what your thoughts are yeah, sure. I mean, to, to your point there, it's it's really interesting. And if possible, you want to create a Zen-like room where you don't have any radiation or waves going mm -hmm. through. Yeah. But it, na na now, now it's really, <laughs> it's so difficult now, right? You've got Wi-Fi, you've got cellular towers around you, you've got all these things happening. But when you bring a device into your room, it acts as a antenna and it's bringing more more of those cellular waves towards you and as you said when you're when you're sleeping or even awake on an intrinsic level what's happening is those waves are causing um a change in your body to your cells you know it's because it's kind of turning those cells on your body on you know it's always always causing something because those waves although they're invisible just like um types of uv light which we know is dangerous um EMF radiation also has an effect on our bodies when we're um, dormant or awake. So I think you're, you're onto something there and you should also be looking at how to um, reduce that. And, you know, a lot of the time I also sleep with my phone on flight mode. I don't, I don't have it on at all. Uh, that was another suggestion room. that they made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
I, I always say no, no one's going to call me at night. I mean, if they do, then they, they, they know how to find me or find a way to connect with me. But I'm, I'm always like, I'll just turn it cold turkey, flight mode, don't have to worry about any of that. And, you know, what I'd say is also try it out, you know, create a diary and see actually how it affects you, how, how you sleep better when you get all that stuff out your room, which might be affecting you um, in those ways. Here's where I'm sold, though, about the phone, um, the EMF shield, where I'm like, I now want to put on my phone. You said skin. <laughs> Maybe I'm shallow. Here we go. <laughs> but if there is something that's going to make my skin better and help me with aging <laughs> and, like, taking good care of my skin, then I'm Done. sold. That's all I care about. I'm, like, 30. I'm going to be 37 in a few months, and I'm, like, all right, we – we are got wow. sunscreen, yeah. like all the, whatever I can do to make my skin stay nice and look young, sign me up. Done. Take all my money. What, well, what, whatever you're doing is working, but your skin's looking great. So, um, you know. Thank you. Keep, thank you. Well, now I need keep. the EMF shield because I'm like, all right, we cannot have this, these waves damaging my skin. Like we got to protect yeah. them. You're going to get one, you're going to get one of, we're going to get one of everything. It's just <laughs> seriously though. And, and just, uh, just while we're on no, skin as well. I need to get well. better at my sleep. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah sleep. Is, yeah. Well, while we're on skin, actually, I wanted to sh share that actually, um, Unilever did a research study two years ago, actually on the topic of blue light and skin. And what they found was 30 hours of screen time cause an increase in skin inflammation by 40%, which means that you get reduction of, re you get reduction of elasticity of your skin, which effectively contributes to early, early aging. So if we, if we think about the time when we're on screens, we've got clothes on, right? So it's only affecting your face or maybe your hands. So, and that, the mug short, you know, that's what we care about, the face, right? The so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we care about. Oh, well, I'm sold. I'm like, yeah, yeah, my eyes oh sleep. My you, you throw in skin, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I need the glasses. I need the protector. Like, I, we got, no, that's interesting. I yeah, never would have Yeah, those how together. UV light or blue light mm -hmm. affects your skin. Yeah, it's such a, like, we don't even think about that. Right? Like, yeah, I go outside and I wear, sun I'm like religious about wearing sunscreen every day, but then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, let me just plop in front of a screen mm -hmm. and scroll we TikTok. Do. Well, if that's going to age me, we're we going to stop that. <laughs> 100%. I love it. Um, okay. I really want to know this because you're speaking to a lot of potentially um, people who work night shift, right? And so we are you know, charting in front of, you know, it's potentially dark at night because a lot of us for, at least in the NICU, we actually put the lights down so that we have these screens um, and then we go home and we're trying to sleep. Like, do you have some good tips for the people out there who are working night shift of how to like keep our eyes healthy? Yeah, totally. And I right. think, and very, <laughs> I think, yeah, you know, for, I think keep, keep it really simple and try to, you know, you're already on a schedule or a pattern of work, right? You know, you've got the night shifts and then during the day you're exposed to, and correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, but when you're working at night shifts, um, you're working in well-lit buildings, you know, you've got a lot of artificial light around you. And then during the day, you're probably sleeping. Is that correct? Yeah. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to sleep. Um, and you know, you're, you, you guys are really special because you, you have to go against the status quo of your own body and your own circadian rhythm, right? You have to, you have to almost reset it after a while. And actually, if you can try to, so there's things out there called, um, sad lamps. I don't know if you've heard of them at all. No. So in the UK, a lot of people suffer from sad, which is seasonal affective disorder. Oh, um, I've heard of this. Oh. We're looking so, people that like, especially in the Pacific Northwest here in, the like States, yeah, where it's just cloudy, rainy majority of the time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's it, yeah for all the rainy places, um, especially the UK. Um, but yeah, we have really short days here, especially in the winter. And so if, I'll give I'll paint a picture for you. But there's no sunshine until like nine a.m. and then the the sun goes down at like four p.m. So you have really short days. Um, so what what there that exists is something known as a sad lamp, where you can usually so it's a type of safe artificial lighting, which it can replicate the sun and you can turn it on when you want to. So if you're someone that's um, night shifting, 
you effectively want to turn it on when you're going to work in the night time. Now, it seems counterintuitive, but your body's already doing it. But if you really want to reset that, that pacemaker for sleep, for example, well, you need to bring that to your life. But you're probably still struggling waking up, you know, probably more so than normal people because you're, you're waking up in not natural sunlight. You're waking up in artificial light and then you're going into artificial light surroundings. And the best way to regulate your circadian rhythm is natural sunlight. And these sad lamps actually help with that in a different way and, you know, put some more force in there. So that's one thing that I recommend because the other type of lighting that you have around you, yes, it can, it does have blue light and artificial light, but it's not, its purpose is not to keep you awake and set your, you know, set your um, circadian rhythm. So I'd say de definitely try that. And secondly, for the eyes, um, when it comes to eyes, if you are in a, you know, dim room, uh, you mentioned keeping light levels low. There's actually, um, there's actually one thing where when there's low levels of light around you, your eyes actually dilate. So when I say dilate, they get bigger. That's because they were trying to get more light into your eyes. And what happens is if you've got dim lights around you uh, and you've got, let's say, a screen in front of you, you might actually be absorbing more blue light because your pupils have got bigger. Um, the source of blue light is still there. And you're, in, you know, you're going to get more blue light into your eyes. So what I say is have a well-lit room, but dim the screen in front of you. Because again, it's about proximity. The, the lighting around you is quite far away from you. It's not close, but screens are close to you. And um, so it's that direct lighting that's going to affect you. So um, yeah, bear that in mind. So basically in the NICU, we're screwed. <laughs> A lot of the NICU settings at night, you know, they tend to be darker. And so we all have extremely bright lights. I think, I think a lot of nurses. Do you wear blue light blockers when I you do. go to work? That's been like, my, I feel my like you thing. do, right? Um, I actually really want to go back to this really quick because I'm curious about the light. So when um, for the people who may be interested in the side lamp, um, what time or like when should they be using it again? I want to go back to that because I, I may be doing this. <laughs> Is that also yeah. a product you ever are considering like? launching under OcuShield? Yeah, so we're trying to, we're looking at Oculamp 2.0. I mean, this is um, about 12, mm. 18 months away to incorporate it. Um, you know, we have some people that use the nice. current Oculamp for the same purpose, but it's not, it doesn't have the intensity mm -hmm. that side lamp has. You need to have about something like 10,000 lux that's emitted from the light source to replicate what the sun does. Um, so it's not sufficient mm. enough, but um, yeah, if, if, if you want to do this when you're not, the best time to use it is the first half an hour of when you wake up. Um, so that's the okay. best time to use it. So if you're someone that's doing night shift, let's say they start at, I don't know, 9 p.m., um, turn them on from 9 p.m. to 9.30 and then kick your night shift. Or just, yeah, even I'm thinking like, okay, if I get up at 6 p.m. to get ready for work, like just turn it on and just, yeah, be or as I'm yeah. getting ready, have the light. Especially yeah, during yeah, the winter totally. because I think it is the most depressing thing for all the years that I work night shift when the time changes yeah. and it's like winter and I wake up and it's already dark out and I'm getting ready for work and I go to work and it's already dark. I, I missed all the sun that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, we there's and that will happen for days uh, in a row. So then it's like half of your week you're literally living in a dark, you know, essentially you're living in a completely altered circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so yeah, for people it, it takes at least a couple of days to a couple of weeks for their circadian rhythm to to reset in that way. But if you consistently deliver your body that type of lighting when your shift starts, whether it's 6 p.m., 9 p.m. or later, your body's going to feel a lot better because you're telling it, hey, now this is your mm -hmm. new morning. So the hormones that need to be released in the body, the cortisol to keep you awake, it now needs to be released instead of the other time because you, you might just be feeling anxious because you don't have enough cortisol in your system just because your body's mm -hmm. like in sleep mode still. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, night shifters, our cortisol is so out of whack. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, your hormones oh. go crazy. And as you said, it takes a couple of weeks for your body to even just, which is ironic because for people who work consistently on nights, you never really have that time to bounce back or to feel normal, especially if you're full time. So those are great tips. Mm. So how often do you recommend wearing the blue light blocker glasses? Um, like 
it's daily, yeah, like I, all day, or just when you're like sitting down in front of your computer. I mean, they're kind of cute. I could rock those all day. <laughs> <laughs> Parker ones are my fave. <laughs> Yeah, we we made them so people look good wearing them. So uh, we don't want them to be ugly because you can get some you can get some ugly ugly blue light specs. Um, but yeah, yeah I definitely yeah. recommend them when you're using any screens. Definitely when you're working. Uh, definitely when you have monitors um, in front of you. Um, so yeah, a- any screens really. Apart from that, I'd also think about indirect okay. lighting. So if you're in if you're in a a workplace where you're not, let's say you don't have screens, but you have um, lighting around you. Let's say you're in an operating theater or what, whatever else. Um, I mean, operating theater might not be a good example, but you have to wear different types of uh, eyewear anyway, already depending on what you're doing. But yeah, let's say in another setting, you, you might want to just wear them because there's so much bright lighting around you already. And that intensity is light enough to, to cause an impact. So um, yeah. Whenever you're on screens or in any other well lit environment by artificial light. I'm really curious about this. What sets your products apart from other blue light blocking? Like, is there anything about your glasses that, you know, is different than a lot of the products out there? Yeah, re- really great question. Um, the reason why our products are different um, is one, we've spent, so we're, we're a team of optometrists. So we, we, we look at this with a healthcare lens on. Um, so we're making sure that our products actually do what they say. And um, what we've done mm-hmm. is we've tried to create the best products that limit as much blue light while keeping a crystal clear picture. And we've gone to the extent of registering our products with you know, the FDA, which is obviously um, the regulatory body in the USA for food and drugs, and also the Department of Health here in the UK. So yeah. all our products are class one medical devices. And a lot of what you can get on wow. the market. So you could use, not... use your like FSA accounts. Oh, yeah. like so, a flex spending account. Exactly. So uh, via or, via Best Buy, if you find your people on Best Buy, you can claim with FSA and HSA um, against them um, because of them. Oh. Um, and there yeah, you go, we, guys, here we go. <laughs> Hot tips. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we we just like to say we've got. We've got healthcare lens on and a lot of uh, companies in the market might not have that credibility. And, you know, as all healthcare professionals do, they want to make sure that uh, consumer and patients are well looked after um, above and beyond and not just putting out things that kind of do what they say, but actually do what they say. So, you know, I'd say that's what sets us apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, because if you Google it and you just buy it, from any kind of random off Amazon, like they can yeah, say yeah. they right. block blue light, but do they block right, blue light? Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, this we, is, I mean, I really like the foundation of this. This is amazing, especially coming from the healthcare background. Oh, yeah, built by, yeah. founded yeah. by Literally. optometrists. Right. Like, yeah, and we, we've tested a few of those Amazon products out, or whatever, and there's a lot of crap out there. Um, a lot, yeah. and mm-hmm. I always say to people, you know, when it comes to your health, you, you pay for what you get. Um, don't, there's no shortcuts when it comes to health, you know, it's a really do look mm-hmm. off yourself and, 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 you know, buy quality products. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this may be a little bit of a, we've touched on a little bit of this, but do you have any like last minute tips just to really help with your eye health? Like, are there really like some things in our households that we can do or just ways to help optimize our eye and brain health? Yeah, I've got two for you. So when you're looking at screens, um, you actually only blink three times in a minute. You should be blinking about 20 times in a minute. And the blink is really important Ooh. because your blink <laughs> hmm. because because your blink actually lubricates your eyes. Now, when you blink, that lubrication stops you from having dry eyes. So when we're looking at screens, because we're not blinking enough, you're going to start getting that dry dry eyes so what i recommend is i know it sounds stupid but type or, or write on a post-it note blink with an exclamation mark and put it on the side of your laptop and when you see it you'll actually be mm-hmm. like oh yeah crap i need a blink because you forget when you're just focused <laughs> on the screen <laughs> so that I is um, that. okay hot tip. that is that is the num- that's number one um second is is utilizing the 20 20 20 rule which is every 20 minutes look away for 20 seconds at least 
20 feet away, which is down the corridor or out the window. And what happens here is it refreshes or resets your visual system because when you're looking at screens, your eyes converge at one point. But when you look further away, what happens is they're, they're at a level uh, playing field and they're not actually converging, they're, they're relaxed. And therefore, you're not going to get that visual stress as you would um, if you were just to keep on going without doing that. So 20, 20, 20, every 20 minutes, look away for 20 seconds, at least 20 feet away. I love that. That's a really good one. Any good tips for people like me who wear contacts and hate? <laughs> what was that? And wear contacts and hate what? Well, Sorry, I didn't catch you. Just hate in general. I've been wearing contacts since fourth grade and it's the bane of my existence. I hate them so much, <laughs> but I would be blind without them. So mm -hmm. I'm like, but I feel like it's just the worst. So um, I don't know if you just I, have any good life tips for contact Any good wearers. life tips for contact lens wearers? Um, yeah, I thought I thought you were asking me there to cure cure your eyes. There, I, I was going to say I, I can't unfortunately no. help help <laughs> help with get, that one. I can't even get LASIK. I'm not even. Oh, LASIK okay. Because yeah. my vision is so bad. We're negative eleven here, baby. Oh wow! So you're really really short sighted. Um, by the way, <laughs> yeah, you're. It's... I don't I don't know if any uh optometrist has told you this but you're more at risk of any retinal detachments or tears in your retina okay. um cool. so, so uh, just just what, if you great. if you get any flashing lights no, I, have, or... I do the annual okay oh, great no i do the annual retinal like the full retinal scan every year when i go mm -hmm. to my optometrist yeah like so perfect, far we're perfect. good perfect good yeah so if you they probably told you before if you get any flashing lights or any dark spots then yeah speak speak to an eye care provider but um yeah to your point any tips for contact lens wearers um yeah just use eye eye lubricating drops because when you have something in your eye like a contact lens you're probably suffering from extra grittiness or dry eyes and um yeah use some lubricating drops daily you know you can use some of those that have non-preservatives like six or seven times as many times as you want and you're just going to feel your eyes feel a lot better but especially with a minus 11 contact lens it's quite thick compared to your normal prescriptions so um yeah if you don't already do that try that. i don't i should mm -hmm. i feel like contact lenses are just like part of my like an extension of my body at this point yeah, yeah. <laughs> part of you <laughs> i feel I, I'm curious about this because um, I mentioned earlier. Okay, so I'm a really big fan of the idea of making your room, you were kind of saying earlier, like a sanctuary. So for us, like we did like, you know, red light at the bedside. We have, I do have a salt rock lamp, which Sam loves to make fun of me for. Um, and then like dimmers, you know, that kind of thing. Like, are there any other good tips you have for the bedroom in terms of like blue light and how to maximize our health in the bedroom? Yeah. Like dimmers, like, are those a good idea? Yeah, they definitely are, but it produces brightness. I'd also say is use uh, full blackout blinds where possible. You, When you want to go sleep, you want to have no light in there at all. You know, if you have a light on a TV screen or a light on something, put a sticker over that or a charger. Like, do not sleep in a room that has any light mm -hmm. at all. Um, so cover up any charging ports mm -hmm. or anything like that and... Um, yeah, you, you'll find the quality of your sleep improves massively um, because your, your, your body's so clever and smart and intelligent and it works in different ways. Even when we think we're asleep, it, it knows what's going on. You know, it can feel when there's a light source or a change in temperature or noises around you. So, um, yeah, I suggest those two things. When, when should we stop devices before bed? Sorry, a lot. I have... He said two hours. Two hours? I, yes. I did my, like... I'm taking notes over here. Damn. I need to get better. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. actually like taking what you're saying. And I'm like, all right, yeah. do better. Everyone's stuff. taking notes today. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Two, two hours. Oh my gosh. And, and um, if, you're, if, if you're someone that um, is usually like WhatsApping or messaging before bed, two hours, like with friends, like tell them you're doing this new thing where you're just going to not be contactable two hours before your you know, average bed. Level. That, that also might give you anxiety where I you don't want to go. I have started silencing my notifications. Yeah. Awesome. Like awesome. I turned on the like thing. So it like shows people like that. I have my notification silenced and yeah. I've started doing that. Great. Great. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's really useful. Um, when you start going cold Turkey on two hours of no screen time, because, yeah. um, yeah, you don't want 
people you don't want to have the anxiety yeah. as well that you're missing things and people are trying to get you um because mm -hmm. they can they can get they can reach you without leaving you a message right in, in other ways so um yeah yeah for sure yeah um one last question sorry this is selfish and off in terms of like supplementation are you a fan at all if you are low on like melatonin or like what's your thought on melatonin in sleep i don't know if you can speak to that or not yeah i think um supplementation helps um for sure so if you're someone that suffers um especially night shift workers again it's about doing what you can so yeah i mean tying to the side lap tip is if you if you want to again reset your 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 circadian rhythm is take melatonin supplementation before you know you want to go in bed and you said you suffer during the day trying to get to sleep because of, of course it's the daytime so yeah taking some melatonin supplementation can really help with that and start with you know start with a dosage which is acceptable and then kind of start decreasing the dosage so your body is not reliant on that um and then you, your body yeah. can start i've also been start, starting itself. to take magnesium more often magnesium yeah. at night magnesium is great like zinc magnesium yeah totally awesome um okay where can everybody find you pimp yourself out all the things where can we get our hands on products give us all the deets sure so you can find us at ocushield which is ocu S H I E L D. So if you give us a Google or you type in ocushield.com, you'll be able to find us. And by the way, for every lovely listener here, we are offering 25% off if you use selfie 25. Oh, oh my God. Um, you're amazing. Thank so you. 25 if, if, is a lot. That's, that's a lot. I that feel like huge. most companies are like 10 and it's like, okay, that was, yeah, no, thank you. That's that like big. Huge. So you huge, guys huge. need to get well, that. It's my, yeah. it's my way. Mean, Sam and I are already like, yeah. Amazing. Well, it's my way of saying thank you to everyone listening to to my uh, my annoying voice for however long we've been speaking to. So there you go. Um, but <laughs> now you have a beautiful yeah. voice. Yeah, you have you a beautiful have podcast. A very voice. soothing voice. Yeah. I don't know how anyone listens to my voice. It's something about the accent. <laughs> too. Like, it's it's just a very it, re it resonates really well in podcasting. But no, I oh, feel like you. for anyone working in healthcare, we need to like actually Absolutely. take this stuff a little more seriously because we don't realize how much. It affects us and how much our sleep suffers and all these things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's totally awesome. Totally. We already have um, our, our, our um, checkout is already. Yeah, here. I know. Uh, I love, I love that. I love that. And, and, and if anyone wants to, you know, find us on socials, it's get official G E T O C U S H I L D on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. And if anyone has any questions for me, um, you can find me at Drew Vin Patel on Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. Um, I'd be happy to answer any eye-related or sleep or blue light-related questions. 